It's the start of the new wildfowling season and the gods are breaking us in gently. It's four in the morning, there's very little wind and the water, if we can see it, is flat calm. Matt Kirk and Nick Horton are the ones who are going to be guiding us through what is probably the most extreme of our shooting sports. Exposure, isolation, water, mud, all bring their own challenges in return for what many would see as meagre rewards. It is a dangerous environment. The, these, these are the half lands. You choose to venture into it without really having a pretty fair idea of you know, how to get from A to B and how to get out of it again at the end of the day, you're probably caught in disaster. There's always days when I walk and go, oh, that was a bad decision. <laughs> Turn round. <laughs> Nick has been shooting this part of the south coast for more than 40 years and has a wealth of historical knowledge to go with it. Matt is not only a wildfowling nut, but also produces award-winning wildfowl calls. Is there a typical wildfowler? Yeah, someone who's hairy, tired, slightly overweight, although I'm, I'm getting there with that. Um, usually an ex-smoker. I used to smoke, usually an ex-smoker, because after a while you just can't do it anymore. Um, <laughs> with a really banged up 4x4. Four four. That's pretty much it, I think. The guys are not expecting big things today, but they have a lot of new kit, thanks to Sealand. As well as the vitally important wet weather gear, they make the decoys too. Their shells are courtesy of Ely Hawk, and we'll be looking at the science of the steel and bismuth that the UK cartridge company produces for this environment. Plus, Matt has invested in a new boat. It's a perfect morning to make sure everything works. What's going to happen now? I'm going to stand here and try not to have a heart attack. No, I'm joking. We're going to set hide up quick. Um, put some decoys out there. Put some Canada, uh, Canada Goose decoys behind us in the hope that if we get anything coming from over there or over there or from behind us, they'll see the deeks because they'll be big enough. We might get some Canada shooting from behind and obviously the duck shooting in front of us. Hopefully, best of both worlds. So we try and do oh, as much of this type of thing if we're going to make the effort to come all the way out here in the boat. So. Excellent. Nick and Matt think there's a chance of some duck like gadwall or widgeon before dawn with some Canada geese lifting once they have the sun on their backs. As Matt builds the hide, Nick explains his technique for putting out the decoys. There are potential dangers even here. There's all sorts of ways of rigging decoys but I prefer to keep mine on, on a single rope. That way if the dog does go ploughing through the middle of the, of the decoy spread Unlike some of the other styles of, of decoy spread, which have got lots and lots of rope attached. If he does foul anything, he'll only foul one decoy at a time and bring it ashore. Exactly at this spot last year, my dog nearly drowned when I was using a gang rigged decoy, which is multiple decoys off of a single rope. And the... Uh, and the dog caught the main line and within seconds it was round his front legs and uh, he was kind of drowning in front of me which was a bit exciting for both of us just as a rough rule of thumb you'd usually use a decoy line that is about three times the depth of the uh, of the water that you're shooting in so my expectation would usually be for about three feet of water. So I've got about nine feet of line, which allows for the decoy to float at the end of a sort of slackish line that's kind of at 45 degrees to the anchor weight, rather than being you know, vertically above it at, at 90, so to speak, and, and floating unrealistically. For me, probably the most enjoyable thing, taking out all of the cooling, the learning the tides, learning the way a particular area shoots, the flight lines. For me, it is the most exciting thing is when it finally comes together. That's the most important thing because there's so many times when we'll go out and you'll you'll get something slightly wrong or you'll misjudge something and it would you've done all you've made all that effort and you get to the pinnacle moment and you go, yes, here we go, and it all goes totally wrong. Um, and when it when it finally just does this and goes you bag those two birds, that for me is what it is. That is it right there. And like I said, it's not a numbers game at all. No interest in shooting big bags. For me, it's never been what I've been about. I would rather walk off of the marsh after a massive like, muddy trudge with two ducks, and I'm happy as Larry. The chances when they come need quick reactions. 
a bit too much like a coiled spring. Matt's swing is restricted on this shot thanks to not loosening his waders and the duck fly on. But it's not too long before there's a widgeon to be retrieved. There's a sigh of relief in the hide. There have been a few teething problems this morning. We've had all sorts of malfunctions with hide nets, decoys, guns, everything. Um, rounded off, I have to say, by finally coming together with that spectacular shot on that widgeon with, um, with a very effective Ely cartridge. Even if you do say so yourself. Even if I say so myself. <laughs> Someone's got to very much more than the sum of its parts, if you see what I mean. There's, there's the whole aspect, not only of the technicality, but also of, of, the, of the romance of it. And, and my personal feeling is, is that if you don't think that there's an element of romance, for want of a better word, uh, with wild fowling, then you probably shouldn't be doing it. The geese are a no-show and we can't stick around too long before the tide leaves us high and dry, so we pack up and head for shore. Wild fowling demands a very different skill set from the shooter, different kit, maybe different attitude, but the rewards are there to be had, and so is the sense of satisfaction when it all goes to plan. Next time, Nick will be explaining how he can walk for many mud miles.